It was a frozen winter day in Canada when little five-year-old Hannah Taylor spotted a man eating out of a garbage can. This defining moment would forever change Hannah's life and the lives of the homeless community in her country as well. Hi, I'm Hannah Taylor, founder of the Ladybug Foundation. It was a cold winter day when I saw a man eating out of a garbage can. I believe no one should have to do that and that everyone is entitled to have a warm bed to sleep in at night. But I learned that worrying and thinking about a situation is not enough. I had to do something. The Ladybug Foundation education program is called Make Change. It is our hope that you will learn about poverty, homelessness, and hunger, and decide to make a change in your school, city, country, and world. Together we can make our world a better place to live. So three years after seeing that event in her life, at age eight, Hannah did found the Ladybug Foundation. The nonprofit raises awareness and funds to support the needs of the homeless and near homeless. Since then, well over $3 million has been raised directly and indirectly by the foundation to fund projects providing food, shelter, and safe haven for the homeless across Canada. In addition, she's, published, she's a published author and a jury member of the World's Children's Prize for the Rights of the Child, fostering her passion for human rights around the globe. She's also grown up now, and she's joining us from Winnipeg, Canada, to share her inspiring story. And we want to welcome you to Full Frame, Hannah. Take us back in time Thanks to so when much, you were uh, five years old uh, and this life-changing event. Uh, what were your thoughts? What went through your mind? What did you see? Well, uh, I guess the, the whole story, when I was five years old, I was driving down a back lane in my mom's car, and I looked out the window, and it was freezing. It was December. I don't know if any of you have been to Winnipeg, but it gets very cold here. And uh, I was looking out my window, and I saw this man in an orange toque searching through a garbage dumpster. And I'd never really seen homelessness or poverty before. Um, I've always, I, I live an incredibly fortunate, very lucky life. Um, and it just struck me. I was so confused. You know, I, I asked my mom, you know, what, what's he doing? Why is he doing that? And she told me he was down in his luck and he had to do that to eat. And it was like there was this weight on my chest, it like hit me. And I couldn't get rid of that weight. My heart wouldn't forget about it. And so for about a year after that day, I, you know, would ask my parents questions about this man that they couldn't possibly answer. You know, questions like, where is he sleeping tonight? Or, or is his family? That kind of thing. And then I started learning more and more about homelessness in Winnipeg and in Canada. And I had even more questions. And uh, you know, one night I was being tucked into bed, and it was about a year later. And I asked another question, and my mom said, you know, Hannah, maybe if you do something about it, your heart won't feel so sad. And so the next day I went to my grade one teacher, and I talked to her about you know, doing something to help. I actually proposed a lunch meeting in the teacher's lounge. Um, and so she and she took me seriously and she said that's a great idea so I spoke to my class and we ended up having a fundraiser and donating what we had raised to a local shelter in Winnipeg and after that just kind of speaking with more and more people about how we can help and it kind of grew and became Ladybug Foundation a few years later you can help these people if you're big if you're small even if you're from a different country you can help them and you can make a difference and what I noticed is that after I had that feeling that weight on my chest for so long as I started to do something about it and I started to see others become more involved in doing something about it that weight started to lift um, so as my mom was right as moms usually are <laughs> um, always good, to, good advice to listen to mom uh, dad too on occasion um, oh yeah <laughs> let's let's talk about uh, that that distance because so often people contribute money and it does kind of lift uh, off the heart a, a bit but you did more than uh, go out and raise funds. I mean, you really got involved. I mean, I've seen some of the videos with you with homeless gentlemen, and uh, they feel very strongly about what you've done. And, and you've kind of peeled back the curtain in a way. You've, you've opened up who these people are, I think, in a refreshing way that many people may not recognize. I mean, there's so many different reasons why people end up homeless. And I think they talk about that in some of the videos I've seen with you. Yeah, no, they do. Um, I think that. Ever since I was little, uh, you know, I've, I've always been, I, I suppose, because I was passionate about helping those who are homeless, and passion is like breathing, it doesn't really stop. Um, I learned really early on that those who are homeless, they're just, you know, they're people just like us, you know, wrapped in old clothes with sad hearts, that's how I used to say it when I was little. Um, and I think that's really important for people to understand, because there's a lot of 
fear in misunderstanding. And you know, if you want to make change and you want to connect hearts, understanding is so important. And so it is, it is very, I think it's, it's profound to hear from those who are homeless, you know, to, to get that human side of the whole thing. Because it's easier to connect and understand if you see that. So. One of the gentlemen uh, I heard say something that I thought was really kind of very spot on. He said, you know, so many people walk by us and they're desensitized, and yet Hannah saw something and she did something about it. I mean, there's a huge distinction there. And yet, uh, if, if everybody was like Hannah, what would the homeless situation be like, do you think? I guess the thing that I wish people would, would do or would realize about those who are homeless, um, and something that I try really, you know, that I, that I learned how to do through this work, is to love those who are homeless like family. And, you know, because you would never let your brother or your mom eat out of a garbage dumpster or sleep on the street. Um, so I think that that's important for people to try to do. And, uh, and yeah, so I, I think that that would, that would really help make a lot of change. You know, uh, Hannah, you, you bring up the fact that your mom said, you know, maybe if you did something, you know, it will lift, uh, lift uh, all that pressure from your heart. Uh, you talked about going to the teacher, how they embraced your ideas. Um, I think young people kind of feel like, sometimes when they have these these ideas that people aren't going to take them seriously talk to me about the power of a child and and how they can they can make a huge difference you have well, I think young people you know I've met so many incredible you know innovative driven um, you know passionate young people through this work and it's one of my favorite parts of doing what I do absolutely speaking at schools and meeting you know kids who are also you know really wanting to make a difference and I think, unfortunately, you know, a lot of kids, I grew up believing that my five-year-old voice was just as valuable and as strong as anybody else's. And that's such an important thing to understand and to remember and keep in your heart. You know, because I think a lot of young people um, don't realize that. And until they realize that, they're never going to be able to put, you know, their heart behind their voice and use it to make a difference with what they care about. So, you know, I, young people are powerful and amazing and I'm and I see and they're hopeful that is the most I think the most special thing about young people especially uh, you know, I've seen it in all sorts of people but especially young people is that they they're so optimistic and hopeful about their ability to make change once they realize that they can um, and that's something that I try to help people uh, remember when I speak at schools and also through our education program talk to me about the world's children's prize and your involvement in that uh, well, the World's Children's Prize, it's sort of like a Nobel Prize for people helping children around the world. And this organization is amazing. You know, it connects kids from around the world. Um, and it gets them involved in realizing their rights as children and also working for children's rights. And I was part of a jury with about 14 other kids from all over the place who either worked for children's rights or had suffered human rights infractions. And every year we would, you know, decide between three candidates. Um, you know, which would win an award for their work through this organization. And it was always an incredibly hard decision because there are amazing people everywhere making a difference in children's lives. And the WCPRC, I was part of it from the age of 9 to 18. And I think one of the most important parts of their work is that they put a face to all of the issues that you hear about in the news. And I was lucky enough to you know, become really close to these jury members. They're like brothers and sisters to me. I just love them uh, from all over the world. And so when I hear about, and you know, I, I watch the news differently because of them. You know, I hear about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and I think about my great friend Ofek and my friend Hamoudi, who live in Israel and Palestine. And when we were in Sweden together, because the organization's based out of Sweden, and we would meet once a year in April, when we were all in Sweden together, they would play soccer together and they were just the best of friends and once we came home and you know things became more violent especially in Palestine I got an email from OFEC asking if I had heard from Hamoudi asking if he was okay so I get to see all of that love and be a part of that love um, so the organization has just opened me up to you know not only all of these amazing people that I will carry in my heart forever but also to all of these other human rights issues that I don't think I would have had a chance to learn that much about um, if I hadn't been a part of it. So, and it also has influenced what I'd like to do later in my life too. So it's an incredible organization and I just love, love the people that I've met through it. Talk to me more about the World's Children Prize. Yeah. Like uh, how, 
How would other kids get involved in it or learn more about it? Uh, well, they do have a website. And uh, you can get your school involved that way. Um, you, you yourself can just learn more about your rights that way. I think that's really important to do. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's that way. Um, yeah, just and also just learning more about you know the the laureates, the people that are you know maybe receiving the award or are nominated for the award in their work. That is incredible to learn about, um, and it's inspiring. So yeah, just through their website, I think is the best way. Well, you've done so much from such an early age. Uh, what, what are you looking to do with your future? Uh, at the moment, I go to McGill University in Montreal, and uh, I'm majoring in international development and minoring in international relations, and I'm hoping that'll lead me to human rights law eventually. Because like I said, you know, I love people who you know, live in refugee camps or are AIDS orphans or you know, people that, like, it's just, it's, it's a driving force for me because I want to, you know, I just, there's just such a connection for me to that. So I think that's where my life's going to go. I'm hoping that's where my life is going to go. What's the next, best, next big thing for uh, the Ladybug Foundation? Uh, well, with the Ladybug Foundation, I hope to continue just connecting more hearts and doing what we can to help those who are homeless. You know, the message for Ladybug has always been, from the beginning, share a little of what you have and care about each other always. You know, I hope to, our education program, there's 10,000 copies all over the world. We recently got a call from Denmark requesting copies, so that's pretty exciting. So I hope to do more with that. Through incredible sponsors, we actually have I Can Make Change uh, online. So much of our, pretty much our education program is online for anyone with internet access to see and to use, and so I hope to keep spreading that around. But the main, the main goal for me is just to, to keep connecting hearts. Hannah, we're going to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>